This is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is June 8th. It's Friday, uh, 2018. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay auction results and see how things did. I have a couple of things I want to mention, though, before we get into this, because eBay has been messing around again with um, uh, item links and redirects on closed items. And I'm going to explain to you what this means. This is, uh, these are some of the things that are still up on the site, for example, this week. On the left, you see this reticulated silver uh, bo uh, uh, card case, uh, uh, a filigree card case. It's not a bad card case, but it's not the original item that was there, okay? They have replaced it because that item closed. It was, if you look at the, the description, it says, uh, Silver Battle Scene Tankard by Luen Wu. That's not a tankard, okay? So if you see um, an item, uh, always check. Now you're going to have to read the descriptions to make sure they match. If they don't match, it means they replaced it, okay? Uh, they replaced the picture but not the description. So match up your descriptions with the item. On this one, it says restored 19th century Chinese Jiajing Fitzhu porcelain soup bowl. All right, that's not a soup bowl, all right? And on and on. So just be very mindful of that when you're checking. And the other thing that eBay's done in their infinite wisdom is I'm going to show you something really strange. I'm going to click back a little here. On your watch list, if you're using a watch list, um, this is why I say even more than ever, leave a bid. Because if you bid on something, they're not going to do this. Like here on the on the closed items, for example, you have this. There's that plate, okay, or or whatever. Uh, pick an item, teapot. Teapot sold for $106. If you click on this teapot, what's going to happen is eBay is redirecting you to another item now. All right, this this uh, 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 snuff bottle. So to see the item you had on your watch list, if you want to go back and do it. On the upper left, there's a little blue line that says the listing you're looking for is no longer available. You have to click the button that says listing, and it'll bring you over to the original item. I don't know why they're doing this. It's uh, uh, sort of re remarketing you, uh, so be very careful of that. So on the, on the newsletter page especially, um, always read the description to make sure it matches the photo, and um, check on your uh, on, when you're looking at your watch list. Um, uh, check uh, to make sure uh, you're getting back to the right item. Um, on your items that you bid on, you don't have that problem, okay? On things that you've bid on, it's not a problem. It'll take you right to the item that you've been bidding on. So as I always say, leave a little bid. Don't have to be a lot. You know, if, if you think the item's worth a thousand bucks and it's up to 50, leave 55 just so that you can keep track of it better, all right? All right, now on to this. This was a nice uh, Ming Celadon incense burner that uh, was up. I liked it. I like the color of it. I like the crackle of it. Nice looking item. And uh, it sold just fine. It went for $1,325. Uh, it was sold by this uh, interesting seller in uh, Palatine, Illinois, um, collector, uh, collectingasia.com. It's a nice thing. And it uh, did just fine. Okay. And then over to, uh, whoops, those are my things. Um, over to here, there was this box. This is a beautifully inlaid um, hardwood box with mother of pearl. Um, they did a lot of these in Vietnam, but this was a very nice one. Uh, I liked it a lot, and uh, it did it did pretty well. It brought six hundred and eighty-five dollars. Okay, this was a nice nice object. It had a lot of uh, uh, very fine detail in it, and not much in the way of losses, which you usually see with mother of pearl boxes. A lot of times, half the mother of pearl is missing. All right. And this is one of the little bargains of the week. It was this little dome top, uh, high foot uh, rose medallion teapot. Uh, rose medallion is not real hot stuff these days, but this was a fairly nice one with this uh, uh, stirrup handle on it and nice spout and still had quite a bit of gilding on it. And uh, it had no repairs or anything. And, uh, it went, and these are good size. These are fairly good sized teapots. And it went for a bargain, $92, okay? Uh, that was a that was a pretty good buy if you collect um, Famil Rose 19th century porcelain. Um, so as I say, leave a bid. You never know. And then there was this. This was a pretty nice looking Dasai uh, bowl, and it had a Chin Lung mark on it. And and I looked at this pretty carefully, um, and I'm not convinced at all that it's not Chin Lung. Um, it, the decoration on it was quite good. Uh, the foot rim looked okay to me, and uh, I guess a few other people thought it was too. It went for $1,784. All right, they had listed it as 19th century, but I think they were being pessimistic about it. I think that was actually an old one. 
All right, and then this this was one of the one of the high flyers of the week. Really nice. This this was the uh, uh, sterling silver uh, signed uh, dragon handle tankard with a beautiful um, court scene uh, on it in relief. Very high quality uh, uh, silver work here. And if you blow up the this guy has really good pictures. You blow it up, you can see it. The base is of course marked. Okay, and uh, it did very well. It brought thirty one hundred and seventy two dollars. All right. And it was by a, a silversmith, Lu, Luan Wu. I believe he was a Hong Kong or Canton silversmith. All right, nice looking pot. All right, and this was that seller in, in, China, in France, the Vendée Classic. They get nice things. This was something we sold. We, we, we bought some uh, Famille Rose stuff out of a, a very nice house in, um, here in Massachusetts, out in the Dedham area. And uh, the lady that owned it all bought all of it at Shreve Crump and Lowe in Boston, um, which was one of the most they had one of the most expensive antique departments in America and they she had this pair of vases they were nice they were about uh, uh, 17 16 inches tall or so or 15 inches tall beautiful quality and uh, they did quite well they brought twenty five hundred and fifty dollars which I, I think was was about right on the money okay I don't think anybody overpaid and I don't think they went under the money which is a good thing and this was one of the big sellers of the week on eBay in the Asian category was this beautiful gold silk uh, ground, uh, very finely done um, needlework uh, of, uh, of immortals in a mountain scene and just uh, a spectacular quality silk. Uh, uh, the, the, the way the, the faces are done, the shading and so forth. We were pretty happy to see this. We put it on the newsletter. I didn't think it would bring this much. I thought it would bring 10 or 12,000. But, it, but uh, in the end, it brought 17,000 on the nose, okay? Um, this is quite a, quite a piece of silk and uh, beautiful, beautiful quality. All right. And then there was this, this uh, uh, Noya Straits uh, teapot. Very, very pretty one. The seller that had this um, is friends of, of a man I know in Malaysia. And uh, he got a hold of me and said, would I, would I, would I share this teapot? It's a good one. He has, this guy has nice things. Apparently, he's a very knowledgeable collector. It's Abundance uh, Antiques or Abundance Palace Antiques. He's an Asian gentleman that gets nice objects. He has a good eye. And uh, he had this teapot, beautiful quality. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $850. But uh, a nice example. All right. And uh, on to this. There was, this was interesting. There were a couple of these paintings. I thought they were really attractive. Uh, beautiful ink work. Um, there was some foxing on the ground, these shaded areas you see around it. It's called foxing. <clears throat> and it's usually because they were stored in a, you know, in a damp place for a while, and there's a little bit of mold got on the paper and stained it. Um, a good restorer can remove that, however. And these were beautifully done. The brushwork, the brush strokes were really nicely done on this, and it did pretty well. It brought $1,449. Uh, and there was a nearly identical one that I think brought 1385 or somewhere around there, about the same money. Uh, but they were in the same exact frames, and presumably they, they hung together in some house. The frame looks to date to about 1900, all right? But I think the paintings are older than that. And uh, then there was this very attractive uh, shaped rim uh, Cantonese uh, uh, bowl or basin um, with a, a, an imperial figure uh, being pushed in, in a cart with somebody with a banner over them and people following along. It's quite like a little procession. Quite attractive, um, nice looking, and the enamels were a nice quality, nice and glossy still. I think the photograph, the way they were photographed, sort of flattened out the scene. I don't think, the, I think they had a hard time getting a good picture of it, but it was very pretty bowl, and I think it went for a very reasonable price, four hundred and fifty-six dollars. All right, that was a nice bowl. That was a very attractive bowl, and uh, then uh, this pair of huge moon flasks. Um, uh, these brought a lot. I was, I'm, I'm not quite sure why, but these were very, very nice. They had interesting scenes on them, though, I have to say. Sort of a, a, a hundred people pattern. And, uh, but, but these were nice and big. And uh, they went for $6,362 with 24 bids. All right. And that was from um, uh, Handy's Antiques. He, he suddenly sort of come onto the scene. He's a new seller. He's got about 90 feedbacks. But he's been getting nice things. And then there was this coral carving. This is an early, this is a 20th century coral carving, but the quality of the carving is really quite excellent. Um, and if you take a second and blow it up, you'll see what I mean. Um, the facial expressions are very good. The carving is nice on the clothes. Uh, the way the the way the, the, the uh, peonies are done at the, at the bottom. Here's the back of it. Uh, quality all the way around, even on the back. And uh, this did pretty well. It brought $3,599. So just a dollar under 3600 
not bad. But uh, coral uh, still has a really strong market out there. And uh, then there was this silk roundel of a dragon and gold uh, gold thread. Uh, this was a nice old one. It, 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 nicely drawn, very strong, uh, very masculine, and uh, quite handsome with a five-clawed dragon swirling around. And it had been evidently uh, mounted onto a yellow backing at some point. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,679. All right. And on to this. This is, those of you that like early uh, celadons will recognize this. This is one of those uh, yuan spotted, uh, iron spot uh, celadon pots. You see these most often in little tiny ewers, but this, this was a little covered jar, a little potus jar. This is not a big jar. It's only a couple inches tall. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $898. All right. And this was also from that uh, seller I mentioned earlier out in Illinois, uh, collecting Asia. He gets good things. And then there was this. This is metal. This is sort of proving metalwork is coming along more and more and more. This was a nicely done, inscribed opium tray uh, with a character mark in the center, but very fine quality uh, metalwork all the way around. Uh, you see all this really fine stippling, nicely carved, good quality, uh, a beautiful quality tray, and uh, it did pretty well. It brought four hundred and forty-five dollars. And our friend Tony over in uh, France had this, uh, Scrap Dixon. He's a, a former British guy that lives over there, and he goes picking, hits all the flea markets and shops, and he's got a really good eye. He finds good things. And um, he also had this up, this incense burner. This was a nice one. It's a later incense burner, but it's, it's got its stand and everything. And uh, very good quality. Uh, it's got some good-looking legitimate age on the interior. Here's the, uh, the bottom of the stand, uh, the interior of the stand, shaped like a lotus. And uh, there's little bits of wear here and there. And uh, it went for $1,925, okay? That was a nice incense burner. Very attractive. All right. And uh, on to this, the rank badge. This was a good rank badge. Nice and tight. Uh, the, the, uh, the needlework on it was very tight, very good quality. It's a later 19th century example, but, but nicely rendered all the way over, um, all the way through from top to bottom. Uh, and has been, you know, mounted with this little uh, Greek key border on it, a little strip of silk. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,200, all right? Uh, we like seeing rank badges. I like rank badges. I think they're very interesting. And uh, on to this was that uh, 18th century uh, spotted deer dish. Uh, they made a lot of these in the early 20th century that are, are pretty obvious copies. This one is an older one. Check out the foot rim. Nice, white, smooth foot rim. Um, here's a detail of it. That's an 18th century foot and not one of these early 20th century ones. And uh, there's the front of it again. Nice deep cobalt. And also, always look at the expression on the faces of the deer. Look at, look at, the, look at the facial expression, the eyes and the, uh, of the male deer looking at the female. And um, also note sort of the comical way they do the hoofs sometimes. They look like, like they're on toes. All right. That's fairly common in early dishes. Okay. And uh, this one brought $1,358. Okay. Nice old example. All right. And on to this. This was that monstrous 13-inch Yongshen Femi Rose uh, platter. Uh, really big one. And again, it's got this uh, scroll uh, central cartouche, the way they did them. <clears throat> they roll it out and leave a white background and then fill it in. Nice, deep Femi Rose enamels, dark, nice, nice, strong red and nice blue. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought uh, $1,637. Not bad. All right, and on to this. This is the uh, pair of 17-inch uh, uh, mandarin vases. Um, Nice-looking pair, actually, the, with uh, Fu lions on the neck and then chimeras uh, <clears throat> here on the um, uh, shoulder. Excuse me, might, might get a little bit of hay fever today, I think. And uh, beautifully done, and they did pretty well. They brought $1,635, okay? And then we're going to take a look over and see what's coming up uh, this weekend. We haven't, we haven't updated the site yet, and we have a bunch of things that haven't showed up yet. But we're going to go through a couple of things that you'll be able to find. Um, and one of the things I wanted to mention was Josh Chamberlain. Uh, he's, his username on eBay is Juice1499. He's got a sale up with about 160 or 70, 170 items, I think, and uh, some good things. And uh, we're going to show you a couple of them in a second. But first, I want to show you this. This is a nice-looking oxblood porcelain vase, or song de bouffe, as they like to call it. All right. And um, at, a di at a glance, at first, I was wondering if this was okay. And then I, I enlarged it and took a good look at it, uh, the mouth, 
sides. You should have shown more details. And then the foot. And this foot rim, uh, to me, looks like a, a rather good early 19th century uh, foot, the way it's shaped. Um, this this, this, this in, sort of canted in foot with a, with a high line of glaze up around the inside, but lots of exposed uh, paste on the outside. And uh, it's only up to $25 with one bid. It ends on Tuesday. I suspect it'll get some interest, but that's a pretty nice vase, all right? Not a bad buy. And uh, there's this, this little uh, lobe-shaped uh, uh, or begonia-shaped begonia uh, Dalsai uh, uh, brush washer, all right? This was a nice one. And uh, let me see here. We'll blow this up. There's the Foo Lion um, with a nice, nice sort of uh, underglaze. That's an under underglaze, a uh, red, red uh, color, but... Um, it's just sort of brownish toned and nice green enamels and good outlining and uh, here's the back of it okay uh, very typical these uh, dishes and uh, it's up to $36 at 20 bids um, it has a reserve on it but I don't know how big the reserve is sometimes you can email people by the way and ask them what's the reserve on this you know if you're wasting your time or not all right sometimes the reserve is you know here it's at 36 the reserve might be a hundred bucks which would be a bargain for this all right. This is something that Josh has up um, over at uh, uh, Chamberlain Antiques that we just mentioned. It's this really nice looking pair of mandarin vases. And uh, these are pretty big. I'm trying to remember how big these were. Um, the, the 25 inches tall. These are big vases and uh, very attractive, nice colors, very good quality. And uh, th this auction ends on Monday. All right. Uh, for those of you that follow them. But look at the quality of these enamels. The coloration is just outstanding. Um, very handsome pair of vases. And they're, and they're slab constructed square vases, which makes them pretty interesting. And they always have these sort of interesting bottoms like that. Nice pair. And uh, they're up to 4,600. And I suspect they're going to go a bit further because they're big. They're over 20 inches and they're a pair. Okay. And Josh also has this up, this very profusely decorated uh, Kung Shi bowl. Okay, it has a it has a Ming mark on it, but uh, it doesn't mean anything. But that's a that's a nice example, nice, very typical Kang Shi foot, very smooth. But I love the the way that the blue was done on this. Just really a really attractive plate, and um, we'll see what that brings. It's up to seventeen hundred and ninety-two dollars, and I think it's got a little more room to go yet. Nice looking piece, and uh, onto this. This is a um, a carved uh, rock crystal uh, toad. Um, toads are often used uh, for symbols in, in, in Chinese and Japanese culture, and um, they were to uh, indicate uh, uh, good luck. And some of them, they, they emit smoke from the three-legged toad, and if you're a good person, the smoke won't affect you, and if you're a bad person, the smoke will make you really sick. And this is up to $143 with 18 uh, bids, all right? It's got no damage or restoration, a couple of little nicks on it, which is pretty typical with rock carved rock crystal. All right, and this is that Pektong box I mentioned at the beginning. It's a nice box. Um, this is a seller over in Europe that gets things once in a while. Um, they've also got a couple of things up right now that I'm not so sure about, but, but this is a good box. Nice old desk box. Um, uh, this is some of the things they have. This plate is, is a copy. That I don't think that vase is, is real, but I don't think they actually know. I think they're sort of just getting stuff and selling it. But this is a good old box. Nice quality, signed and good inscription on it, and it's up to a hundred dollars, and it'll probably go in a, probably two or three times that by, by the time it's over. All right, and um, let's see what else do we have here. Is that it? Um, oh yeah, this is the last pair of vases. Josh also has these. This is another big pair. I don't know where he gets all these big pairs of vases, but this is a, a bit different. It has Mandarin figures on it, battle scenes and emperors and whatnot. Nice looking pair of vases, and they're up to $545. They're not as good as the other pair. The other pair are really exceptional, but these are good big decorative ones, and they are also, um, how tall are these? They're 24 inches tall. They're big boys too, so... At any rate, that's it for the week, and we'll be finding, we'll be adding a lot more stuff into the newsletter um, later on today. We're, as always on Friday, we're running behind. It's just the way it is around here. And we have another video to get out, the, the long-promised uh, uh, Hong Kong one. We, we had some things happen. We actually lost our Internet and uh, actually lost one of our, um, our other website. Uh, the P.L. Combs site was down for two days due to a, 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 a mess-up. <laughs> we'll put it that way. I didn't even have an email, so it's been quite a week. Uh, have a great weekend, and uh, good luck out there if you're going uh, 
uh, to hit some auctions this weekend or going out poking around. I hope you find something you love, and uh, we'll see you next time. All righty? Have a good weekend. The summer's here. Go enjoy it. All right. Best to all. Bye-bye.